thank the organizers of this workshop for inviting me here. Um, let me just introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I'm Bert Asmussen and I'm working for Deutsche Bahn, the Gesa Steam Technik, in the Department of uh, Noise and Vibration. But uh, at the moment, I'm partly seconded to UIC for coordinating the Rivas project, which is another European project. And uh, always when I'm attending a, uh, some, some event, I have to choose my hat. Either I'm wearing my DB hat or uh, wear my UIC hat. And today, I would like to, take, uh, to wear my UIC hat. And um, that's also the reason why I would like to draw your attention to a couple of very fundamental facts. What is the problem? Um, with vibration for the railway companies. So I've prepared uh, very few slides just coming back to the, to the roots, what is, what is really the problem for the railways. And then I also would like to, to show you a couple of slides um, introducing the Rivas project and uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, several contact points between cargo vibes and Rivas. So what's the problem for the, for the railway companies? We've seen that the public sensitivity to vibration has enormously increased in recent years. Uh, noise is a problem of all modes of transport. Uh, noise is a, is a problem for all modes of transport, but vibration is really a specific problem for rail and therefore it stands all the more uh, as a criticism of rail transport. We see that opposition to new lines now is almost as much about the effects of vibration as it is about noise. Vibration mitigation measures are extremely costly. They feature heavily in the cost of railway infrastructure projects. Um, we also see that complaints about vibration and vibration-induced noise increase when noise barriers have been built. People usually say uh, this must have something to do with the, with the noise barrier. We, we didn't have vibration before, but uh, since the noise barrier has been built, now we have vibration, so the noise barrier must have uh, contributed to, to the vibration. Um, there's a, still a lack of established solution, particularly for uh, railways from for surface railways, and also the, the, the legislation is not really clear. We have different, uh, different legislation in the different European countries. Prediction procedures are uh, unclear, and that's um, that means that there's a huge demand in order to ensure that uh, the rail transport can be increased in the, in the next years, uh, that we need uh, innovative solutions, particularly for hotspots, but also for low vibration vehicles. Um, so what are the general future requirements for vibration mitigation measures? Uh, it's not only that we need solutions, efficient solutions which do not endanger the competitiveness of rail traffic, but we also need, first of all, we need reliable modeling tools for the planning process. Uh, if that's not available, then it's not possible to choose the optimal mitigation measures for a certain application, and that usually leads to over-engineered solutions. Then, of course, we need technical solutions for efficient vibration reduction, for example, resilient elements in the track, um, trenches, low vibration vehicles, and then, and that's uh, now here we come to the to the focus of this workshop. Of course, we also need clear procedures for the assessment of the different technologies, and that means we need clear descriptors, um, the comparability of different solutions, and uh, descriptors not only in terms of physical quantities but also in terms of human perception. And these three building blocks together they uh, really enable efficient vibration mitigation. Uh, let me take a typical example. Um, let's assume you have a track which uh, is uh, embedded in some soil. You have a vehicle, rolling stock, let's call it vehicle one, and you have a mitigation measure like an uh, under-sleeper pad. We measure the efficiency in terms of insertion loss for this uh, solution for track one, soil one, and vehicle one. Uh, then the question is, uh, what is the best descriptor for measuring the efficiency? Uh, that um, we also need clear measurement protocols for measuring the efficiency. But then, now you have another track. Track two, which has a slightly different configuration. It's embedded in different soil. You might have other rolling stocks, uh, other rolling stock running on the track. 
but you install the same mitigation measure on the sleeper pad, for example. What's the efficiency here? So we not only need descriptors and clear measurement protocols, but we also need transfer procedures to transfer measurements which have been done at one location to another location. Um, this is a similar picture uh, which we have seen already in, in, in David's introduction, but this is just to remind you that uh, from the railway point of view, vibration is only one part of the problem. Um, if, if we talk about annoyance, then we always have to keep in mind that a typical hotspot where we have problems with vibration is a hotspot where we also have problems with noise, in many places, but we certainly also have problems with vibration-induced noise. And uh, when talking about reducing annoyance, one really should, should keep in mind that uh, these three things really are linked closely linked together. Now, um, just let me briefly introduce uh, the Rivas project. Mm, most of you have, have heard about the Rivas project. That's also that's another European project within the Seven Framework uh, program, um, focusing on developing vibration mitigation measures. Rivas stands for Really Induced Vibration Abatement Solutions. Uh, and uh, the, the focus of RIVAS is to develop innovative solutions for vibration mitigation measures at source, improve resilient elements in the track for ballasted track, but we've also included slab tracks, technologies for the reduction of vibration on the propagation path, low vibration rolling stock, uh, and then uh, the key approach is that all the, the developments which have been made in the Rivas <laughs> shall be validated in laboratory tests and as far as possible also in field tests. And last not least, and this is again um, the connection here to the workshop, we have worked out standardized test procedures for vibration mitigation measures which uh, shall be or which, which have been applied for all the tests within the project to make things really comparable. We have a consortium which comprises now 27 partners uh, and um, it is, is uh, now we are, we are in the third year and we are about to the project will finish at the end of this year and just to give you a brief overview some examples of the of the solutions we are we are working at um, first of all we are looking at uh, improving the track and the wheel quality uh, we have investigated the effect of insulation joints of uh, bad track quality and of, um, uh, of, of bad wheel quality. For example, wheel flats and wheel pulling organizations have a very strong impact on the, gener uh, on the generation of vibration. We are working out uh, solutions for reducing these, uh, these irregularities. There's another activity, um, resilient elements in the track. Here the, the key issues are development of a very soft ray fastening system. This is mainly something for, uh, for reducing vibration induced noise. We are also working on the, on the sleeper. We have, uh, uh, we have developed prototypes of sleepers, of very heavy sleepers, of wide sleepers with different kinds of under sleeper pads, particularly very soft under sleeper pads. We uh, are going to improve the, uh, the interface between the sleeper and the slab for slab track. Uh, under sleeper pads and curves and for switches is a key topic. Mm, we have, as I said, we have, um, our partners have uh, produced a couple of prototypes for different sleepers. The sleepers have been tested in laboratory tests, for example, the track box of Silex in Spain. Um, that we have quite recently done a, a large field test on a, uh, on, on a test field in, uh, in Germany of Alfarge where different, um, different sections of track have been, have been equipped with different sleepers, different under sleeper pads and uh, vibration has been measured. Vibration mitigation measures on the transmission path we, have, we are going to install, or we have installed three different solutions. One is a uh, sheet, uh, sheet pie wall in Sweden. Then uh, this is something which will be done uh, in the next four weeks. Um, 
uh, we are going to test the effect of a wall of stiffened soil next to a track. That's a test which is now uh, under preparation in Spain. Uh, it's a technique which is called jet grouting, where you uh, stiffen the soil next to the track. Um, hopefully, we can we will be able to do the installation in June year, this year. And another activity, another attempt uh, is um, bringing in large mats of soft material. Um, that's a technique which has been developed by, uh, by, by Keller Grundbau. And uh, we are going to do a test with this uh, soft material in, uh, in Switzerland. Last but not least, low vibration rolling stock. In the first uh, quite extensive study, we have studied the influence of the different rolling stock parameters like uh, masses, uh, properties of the suspension, stiffness, damping, the geometry of the, uh, of the wheels, the wheel set, the whole, uh, the whole coach. This has been done for different soils and different soil types and also different types of excitation. Based on this study, the different uh, the, uh, the relevant parameters have been identified, and uh, based on the identification of the relevant parameters, um, we are going to develop design guides for low vibration vehicles. And that's uh, there uh, what one really quite important lessons we have, uh, lesson we have learned is that the influence of rolling stock parameters is relatively small. Uh, and basically, it's, uh, it's mainly the unsprung mass. And the unsprung mass, of course, has quite a huge influence on the generation of vibration, but all the other parameters, like uh, axle distance within a bogey, um, the properties of the suspension, primary suspension, secondary suspension, that's quite limited. Uh, so when, uh, when it comes to reducing vibration by doing something on the rolling stock, um, there, there are not very many choices reducing the, the unsprung mass, but then we do not have so much room, and then of course improving the, the wheel quality, but these are really the two, the two schools uh, you, you can play with. So, um, now I've just shown you the, the different um, say technical solutions we are working on in Rivas, and our goal is to test all these solutions either in lab test or in field test, but then, now the question comes, when we do a field test, where we measure typically insertion loss at a certain point, let's say eight meters away from the track, we measure vibration in the ground, what does that mean in terms of uh, human exposure <coughs> in buildings? So the, the, the target is that for all the solutions we have developed in Rivas, we also assess the performance in terms of human exposure, in terms of reduction of annoyance. And uh, this is the, the, uh, the focus of our work package one. Obviously, this is always work, work package one in the, in the projects. And uh, it's basically a three-step procedure. In the first step, we have reviewed uh, the existing standards, regulations, guidelines, uh, and uh, what's available was available. This is um, summarized in a deliverable, deliverable 1.4, which you can download from our website. The second step is to predict exposure in buildings and estimate annoyance. This um, here, the, the, the three steps are that um, data for typical building configuration, for typical ground configurations have been identified. Uh, certain exposure annoyance relationships have been chosen and also another procedure has been worked out to calculate um, the descriptors. And the, the, the basic idea of, um, of this procedure to predict exposure is shown here. It's basically uh, it's, it's based on four transfer functions. What you usually have in, in the, this, uh, is that uh, you have a measurement of vibration at eight meters distance from the track, for example, with uh, with the uh, vibration mitigation method without, but from from and then you can calculate the insertion loss at eight meters from the track, and from this you want to calculate um, the, uh, the the human exposure in the building, and therefore uh, we have defined 
for transfer functions which have to be calculated. The first transfer function is from the meters point to the building location, then uh, from the ground at the building location to the building foundation, then from the building foundation to the floor that gives the vibration inside the building uh, and uh, if it also comes to calculating uh, ground ball noise then we need a fourth transfer function from the floor to ground ball noise. So then the next step as I just said is the assessment of all the reverse results in terms of the de decrease of exposure and the noise associated with these mitigation measures. This will also be summarized in a deliverable, which is also a public deliverable, and it will be available at the end of the project in December 2013. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the, pr the procedure is also already available in a deliverable, which, is, uh, which you might download from, from our website. And last but not least, uh, I would like to introduce the Rivas website to you. It's simply the www www.evas-project.eu and uh, when you click here on the button um, results and publications you will find a list of all the deliverables which have been published until now and uh, at the moment we have 14 reports available on the website and there are a lot of other uh, <coughs> deliverables now coming in the next uh, four, in, the, in the next six months. Okay, uh, that was just a brief overview and uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.